Hello everyone and welcome to this video on dot plots and histograms. This is going to mark the start of our 10th unit and we are going to start talking about statistics, specifically descriptive statistics or quantitative statistics. Um, we, our objective for today is students will be able to represent data on a number line by creating a dot plot and a histogram. So we're going to start off with graphs. Make sure you get the objective down. Um, and let's go ahead and kick off our statistics. The first idea that we're going to talk about is a dot plot. And what a dot plot is, is a frequency plot that shows the number of times a response occurred in a data set where each data value is represented by a dot. So here's an example of a dot plot, and it's pretty easy to identify. I have a series of dots. A non-example would be this histogram here, which we'll talk about later, but notice it doesn't have dots. Now, in our definition, we talk about um, each value being represented by a dot. So we can look at the, the data and interpret the number of one occurred two times in the data set because um, there are two dots at one. Additionally, you can also find out how many total responses there are in a, in a data set by counting the number of dots inside a dot plot. Make sure you, sorry, I'm bouncing around. Make sure you get this definition in your notes. And we're gonna now talk about the steps in creating a dot plot. So, in order to create a dot plot, first of all, you have to organize your data by rearranging your numbers from least to greatest, smallest to biggest. The second step is to draw a number line that corresponds to the range of the data values that covers all data points. So, if I have a data set that ranges from, wow, that's really temperamental, bouncing around. If I have a, a data set that is ranging from zero to five, I'm not going to make a number line from zero to 10 or zero to 100, correct? I want to represent my data, um, you know, best by creating a number line that corresponds to my data. Wow, this is really going. I'm not sure why it's going. Okay. And step three, sorry for all the hiccups. Step three, we're going to place a dot above the number line to represent each data. So if I have the number one, I put a, a dot above number one. If I have another number one, I put a dot above number one. So here we go. Um, in order to make a dot plot, I'm going to represent Michael Phelps' um, 200 meter freestyle times rounded to the nearest second. Um, by organizing them first from least to greatest. So I have all of his data, and I want to go ahead and rearrange them from least to greatest. So I have 103, 103, 103, 103, um, and I, I've organized them this way. Then I have two 105s. I have two 106s. 106, 106, 106 a 107 and a 108. So notice I, I went ahead and I rearranged them from least to greatest. So now we're going to draw a number line that corresponds to the range of the data values that covers all these points. So I start at 103 and I end at 108. So therefore I want my, my data um, to represent that. I'm going to add a couple of values before and a couple of values after um, just to make sure that it's kind of balanced. So I go from 100 to 110. Now I'm going to place a dot above the number line to represent each data value. So I have 103, and that occurs four times. So I have four dots at 103. I have no 104s, two 105s, three 106s, a 107, and two 108s. So this is a dot plot that represents Michael Phelps' times in the 200 meter freestyle ranged, um, sorry, rounded to the nearest second. Now we're going to go ahead and make a dot plot from this data set of numbers. So first I want to go ahead and rearrange from least to greatest. So please get this in in your notes. This is the, the first one. So I have 4, 4, 6, 10, 10, 10, 10, 11, 2 12s, 13, and 15. 
Now I want to draw a number line that represents my data values. And this is done for you in your notes. And now we just want to go ahead and we want to um, draw dots representing our data. So I have two fours, so I'm going to put dot at four, two dots at four. I have one at six, three at 10, 11, two twelves, a 13, and a 15. So this is a dot plot that represents my data. On the next one, I'm going to have you pause the video, go ahead and try this one on your own. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, um, try this one on your own. Remember, you need to organize your data from least to greatest, and then draw a number line, which is already done for you in your notes, and to plot the data. So go ahead, pause the video, and try this one now. Okay, so hopefully you have tried this um, by now and you rearranged your data in your notes to look like this. You should have 222, 44, 6, 7, 210s, 13, and 214s. We have uh, our graph already drawn for us and now we want to construct our dots. So if I have three twos, I'm going to go ahead and um, put three twos, two fours a 6 and a 7, two tens, 13, and two fourteens. So hopefully your dot plot looks just like this, um, and dot plots are, are pretty easy. Now we're going to go ahead and go on to a histogram, and a histogram is a graph that divides a data set into equal intervals using rectangles to show how often the data occur within a given interval. The frequency of an interval gives the height of the bar. And frequency means how often it occurs, so how many times it happens. Please make sure you get these in your notes. So we're going to look at some examples here. So this is an example of a histogram. And again, it's a histogram because I have rectangles to show how often data occur within an interval. And also, there are equal intervals, equal intervals. And what I mean by that is, notice, like we go from 0 to 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 300, 300 to 400, so on and so forth. The height of the interval gives the frequency. Um, so here my height of my rectangle is at 30. That means there are 30 responses within um, the data set that occur from 0 to 100. So it could be, um, I don't know, have what, 10, 10s, um, 15s, any value within 0 to 100, we have 30 numbers that occur there. Then the same thing for here. So if I have, um, let's say this is at 15, from 200 to 300, there are 15 responses from 200 to 300 and 400 to 500, there are again 30, 30 data points um, that have values between 400 and 500. Here's a non-example of a histogram. This is a, a bar chart, and bar charts generally represent qualitative data or um, specific responses. So here, jigsaw, riddle, crossword. Notice these are non-numerical values, so these are represented with a bar chart versus a histogram where we have equal intervals. So some things to, to think about. Um, again, these are not the same bar graphs and histograms. So this is kind of going over what, what I just talked about here. So notice here I have quantitative data, numerical values, correct, and equal intervals, whereas here these are, are not um, numerical values. Again, um, we have heights that represent the number of responses here. Okay, the bars aren't touching for this non-example, and here the bars are touching. So histograms, make sure your bars are touching. 
Okay, and that's our question. So make sure we know the difference between a bar chart and a histogram. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and first interpret a, um, a histogram. So here's a question. How many people scored between 76 and 80 um, on their test? Well, I'm going to find 76 to 80. That's here. And then I'm going to figure out the height of the histogram. And it occurs at 4. So therefore, four people responded, um, or sorry, four people scored between 76 and 80 on their math test. Next question, if two students scored within 81 to 85 here, does that mean one scored 81 and the other scored 85? Well, no, this is just an equal interval. So if I have two people here, I could have any values. I could have 83 and 84, I could have 81 and 81, I could have two 85s, it just gives me that two people score between 81 and 85 on their test. And then the last idea here, um, again, how many people scored between 81 and 95? So my, my range starts here at 81, 95 is up here. So if I wanted to figure out um, a total within a bigger range, I just add up the values. So two people scored between 81 and 85. Three people scored between 86 and 90. And one person scored between 91 and 95. So if I add all of these up, that means six people. Six people scored between 81 and 95 on their test. Additionally, we can summarize all the data points by adding up all of the heights. So if this was two people, three people, one person, four people scored here, and two people scored here, we can add up the total amount of scores for this, um, this data to give me the total amount of people who took the math test. So I have four plus the six here, and two gives me 12 people to test altogether. So let's go ahead and create a histogram. In your notes, make sure you um, read along with these values. So step one, we need to organize the data by rearranging the numbers from least to greatest, so just like dot plots. Step two, we're going to count how many values correspond within the range. And step three, we're going to create a rectangle for the frequency to show each value. So here, I have the following data. Um, of how many cappuccino coffees were made at a cafe every hour during two full work days. So I have all my values in step one. I want to go ahead and rearrange from least to greatest. So this is on the back side of your notes. Please go ahead and fill these in. So from least to greatest, I have all my data. So notice my data is from 0 to 3, 4 to 7, 8 to 11, 12 to 15, 16 to 19. So I'm going to calculate, okay, how many responses occurred within these intervals? 0 to 3, well that is 2. From 4 to 7, that is 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to connect. Remember, histograms connect to each other. 8 to 11, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have more responses up here. 12 to 15, it's 1, 2, 3. So I'm back at 3. And 16 to 19, that is 2. Okay, again, make sure your histograms are touching. You can fill these in if you want, um, but you don't, you don't have to, to fill it in. Can you go ahead? I would like you to pause the video and try this example on your own. Okay, so hopefully you have tried this problem now, and the first step always, always in this problem, is the first step is to organize our data from least to greatest. So I have the data in order from least to greatest, and now we determine how many times um, on each interval a response occurs. So from 0 to 2, there's 1, 2, 3. So I have 3. And from 3 to 5, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So I go up to 4. 
And from 6 to 8, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we go up to 6. And from 9 to 11, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we go up to 7. And from 12 to 14, we have 2. So we have 2. Okay, and that is our histogram. Uh, our closure is what is the difference between a dot plot, a histogram, and a bar graph? Well, the difference between a dot plot, a histogram, and a bar graph is that dot plots and histograms, these are for numerical data. A bar graph is for categorical data or non-numerical data. Um, a dot plot uses dots, a histogram and a bar graph use bars, and the final difference between a histogram and a bar graph is that histogram rectangles are together. Don't forget, like my video, subscribe, and Schorberg is out.